Hey basketball players, if you're looking to score extra and more points every single game, this is definitely the video for you. Today, we are breaking down Michael Porter Jr. and how he plays off ball because the way he plays off ball can help you also score an extra 5 to 15 points per game. So let's get down and let's check out Michael Porter Jr. So right here to start is Michael Porter Jr. Now, from here, what he's going to do is he's going to then pop up and he's going to fake like if he is going to be popping up towards the three-point line. Now, his defender is overplaying that cut. And because of that, he is now going to then go back door. He never even had to push that player. That fake was good enough. He knew that defender was going to overplay it. He then goes back door, cuts back door, receives that pass, and goes up for that dunk. This is another nice back door cut. So we have Michael Porter Jr. right over here. He is being defended by Butler from the Miami Heat. Now, we have Jokic up top. Jokic is a fantastic passing center. And what we have here is Butler who is down on his heel on his right foot and he is now overplaying in my opinion he is overplaying the cutoff what he should be doing is having his left hand out not by his side because what that is telling us is he is looking to cut off that pass when that pass goes over to Michael Porter Jr. now because of that he then cuts back door quickly at this point Butler knows that he needs to catch up, and at this point, he's not doing all that bad of a job. However, there's no help defense over here, and this is what Michael Porter Jr. seen when he was getting ready to receive the pass. We have what looks to be a possible screen down and a pop up over here, which is leaving the baseline wide open on this side. This player is in no way, shape, or form able to cut off Michael Porter Jr. and because of that that leaves that lob pass over Butler wide open now what Michael Porter Jr. does here is fantastic so he catches that ball on two feet which allows Butler to go up and to try and block that shot and because he's able to get him off of his feet he now goes up when Butler is coming on the way down and that is something that you want to do as a player when you have a lob pass coming into you you want to land on both feet because that's going to make it look like you're going to go back up straight up right away which you don't have to and then you have that player who lands on your back and you can get that and one here we can see it from another angle and of course he lands uh, sort of on both feet but he keeps that ball above his head like if he's going to go back up, which he doesn't. Butler is very block happy sometimes, and that's what we get. He lands on his back and gets that and one. Now this is another nice cut by Porter Jr. So what we have is a nice screen on that wing. He now uses that screen, and look, his shoulder touches his screener's shoulder. That pins that defender on that screening player. He now gets open, catches that ball with two hands. Now, when he goes in for that, that layup or the dunk what's coming up, what happens? Well, he's got three defenders on him. He has one, two, and then one behind him as a third. What does he have to do to be able to make this basket? He needs to go up strong with two hands. If he goes up with one, he's going to get blocked. While he goes up with two, Neither defender is able to or goes up to block him or contest it, so he's able to finish with one. Now, this next clip that we're going to be breaking down, Porter Jr. is down here, but we have Nikolai, Nikolai Jokic up top. Now, this is a nice clip for anyone who plays center or plays guard or forward like Porter Jr., because in my mind, he could play either position. So... What we're going to have here is Porter Jr. is going to low post or post up his defender who is undersized to guard him literally right underneath the basket. There's two ways to post up. If you want to post up and do a set post up move, 
you would want to post up right here. But if you're looking to get a nice quick basket and you've got the ability to pin a player underneath the basket, then this is what you would be looking to do. So he pins that player. Now, if you are a center or you're in a position to pass to the low post, this is something that you really need to do and focus on. And that is what we have with Nikola Jokic is he notices that that defender is on that far side. So what we have is him actually passing to the opposite side of where that defender is so that Porter Jr. is able to land and go up for the easy left-handed shot, but in this case he uses his right hand. So the last clip that I'm going to break down is him coming off of a dribble handoff and watching his defender and seeing what his defender is going to do. So he goes up to Nikola Jokic for that dribble handoff. Now, his defender, what looks to be Patty Mills here, goes underneath that screen, which is a massive mistake when you've got somebody who's able to shoot the ball. What should have happened is he should have gone over top and fought through that screen. This player on Jokic is in no player, that looks like Pirtle, is in no position to hedge on that shot. And that's what you would normally do if your defender is going to be going underneath the screen. The issue here is... Patty Mills has no way of defending Jokic in the post, so he really shouldn't have been going underneath this screen. So, his Michael Porter Jr. is able to see that. He now catches that ball, takes a quick step back. Patty Mills is in catch-up mode now, and Porter Jr. is able to hit that wide-open shot uncontested. And that's all from seeing Patty Mills go underneath that screen, pull back, and take that shot. Anytime you see your defender go underneath the screen with no hedge, you need to pull back for a shot. Now, depending on your coach, if you're not a three-point shooter, you might not want to take that shot. But personally, me as a coach myself, every single player, I give a green light to shoot an open three-point shot. I don't care if you're the worst shooter on the team. If you have a wide open three, you need to take it. I hope that this video has helped you as a basketball player looking to become a lot better, especially off ball. If this has helped you, hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys again next time.